I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Wednesday, December the 16th, brought to you in part by Zactran, bovine respiratory disease, steals pounds, Zactran pounds back. Remember to observe your 35 day withdrawal period after treatment. For more information, go to Zactran.com or visit with your Banger Ingelheim representative. Transition. Uh, boy, we're seeing uh, the fruits of the, of the cricket election uh, already. At, you know, just uh, earlier this week, we saw the Electoral College uh, go ahead and, and finish their vote counts, and, and it appears that uh, all the efforts have been exhausted for the most part to, to try to uh, prove all the, the crookedness that went on during the election. And, and uh, so we're looking forward here to a, a, a Biden administration. And I tell you what, it didn't take long. And uh, the, the more we get uh, past, uh, you know, any control that we had from Trump and now that we're moving forward with this uh, total Democratic uh, transition here. Uh, we're seeing more shutdowns come in in your democratic states and cities and, and uh, just uh, really putting a lot of people out of work. And, you know, if those shutdowns worked, why didn't they work when they did them six or eight months ago? They didn't work then. They're not going to work now. Uh, we've got the vaccine out now. That does have moods quite a bit better. And and they just got to get more of it going. Looks like the second company that has the vaccine is now going to be uh, sending it out soon. So that's good news. And, and for the folks that want to take that vaccine, I think it's great that they get in there and take it and uh, at least give them some peace of mind, if nothing else. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, we just start to see more and more of the way things are going to go here with uh, President-elect uh, Biden. And we see in that uh, it's total identity politics. And that's, that's one of those uh, political type of words or phrases that you may not think about too much. But it's politics totally by the way people look. And, and that is as you start seeing him uh, selecting people that he's nominating for his cabinet, uh, that, that's what you see. It's, it's all about what they look like has absolutely nothing to do with their qualifications for the job. It's all about what they look like, how much they helped him uh, get elected, and things like that. And it just seems like uh, they're just trying to make sure that they're checking all the boxes in the, the equal employment opportunity boxes there for minorities and the like. And, and uh, you know, they say they want it to look like... Uh, uh, America but my gosh I didn't know we had that much of a mixed bag out there but uh, you know we saw him uh, has his put up a name to nominate for uh, the Secretary of Ag so it goes to show you how little Biden knows or cares about agriculture so you know you can imagine the uh, conversation they had uh, okay um, Mr. Biden, uh, who are you going to have for Secretary of Agriculture? If he was even there during the, the conversation, it was probably Obama and, and a bunch of the other people that were doing it, and he was probably taking a nap somewhere. But let's say he did have something to do with it. Okay, President-elect Biden, who are we going to have for, for your, uh, you know, your Agriculture Secretary? And he says, uh, they've got their own department? Really? And they say, yes, sir, you know, it was uh, put in back in by uh, Abraham Lincoln. And uh, in fact, it's the only one whose headquarters are right on the National Mall there in Washington, D.C. And he says, huh, agriculture. Well, well, who did who did Obama have? Uh, Tom Vilsack. OK, we'll just put him in there. You know, and you could tell that, 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 you know, they didn't think too much about what they were going to put in there because, you know, uh, Tom Vilsack is, is, a, is a white male. And, uh, and, you know, and they're, they're going through and as they're trying to find these, these different people, uh, they're, they're trying to find oddballs and, and uh, jackpot type uh, individuals to put in there. And they said, well, uh, Mr. Vilsack, he's not crippled, he's not bad-eyed, not parrot-mouthed, not pigeon-toed, not frozen-eared, not bobtailed, and not prolapsed. Well, I can't think of anybody else to put in there, so just go ahead and put him in there. You know, it's just ridiculous. Uh, you know, I think Obama would approve of that. And then, and then later on Tuesday, we found out that uh, he's got Mayor Pete 
in as transportation secretary. Now, what did him being elected mayor of a moderate-sized city uh, qualify him to be the transportation secretary? You know, and then again, he was lucky to get in there. He's a white male, but uh, I guess he could qualify as a... But uh, what else is going on? It, you know, it just it, as, as you're watching stuff now, after we've lost the election and uh, going through it, it you know, you just kind of got to keep a barf bag close by your chair when you're watching the news and thing that's going on. You know, it's hard to watch the news. Uh, I hadn't watched Fox News now for about a month. Uh, but but still kind of curious about the news and your mainstream news is so biased that then you know that that you can't watch it so starting to trickle back in and then watch some of this uh, news but uh, you know even in the ag sector everything is so uh, so crooked anymore it just seems like corruption is everywhere you know we used to say in the, about the the sale barns uh, somebody would say I, I don't know about this I'm not sure if these these bred cows I got are B3s or not, you know, and somebody, somebody would say, you think there might be something crooked going on around these sale barns? No way. I think the sale barns are the most honest place in the world somebody could do business now. And if, uh, if something happens to you in there, it's probably because you weren't paying close enough attention or didn't know. But, uh, you know, even in the ag news, we see that uh, the NCBA has uh, has given their their inaugural top hand award to Senator Pat Roberts. Uh, Senator Pat Roberts, he's he's the, the 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 chairman of the Senate Ag Committee. He's the one that stonewalled any debate or vote or consideration or anything that had to do with your minimum negotiated cash requirement bills that were put up seconded, signed on by numerous, numerous senators uh, everywhere. It, it was uh, supported by a large contingency of your grassroots uh, cattlemen's organizations, but not in CBA, no, because your packers don't want it. And your, your, your packer uh, buddies, their sweetheart buddies, their partners in the corporate feedlots, they didn't want them either because they don't want people getting a peek at their sweetheart deals. So, so, but, uh, but they gave him the top hand award, first time ever for all he's done for cattle producers. Is that right? Yeah, he's really done a hell of a lot for the cattle producers. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the award they got, uh, the, gave him should have been called the best butcher for all he's done uh, to cut your cattle producers' throats and to, to keep your packers in, in monster uh, you know, profits. And, and I tell you what, that, I needed a barf bag to read that article too. But I tell you what, uh, as we go through, uh, we've got some things to look forward to after the first of the year in your cattle markets. Uh, your futures are very slow. Uh, we started seeing a little trickle of fat cattle trade lower again for the guys that want to take it. But I have heard that some of these lower deals are some, some elephants, rhinoceroses, uh, hippopotamuses, some of those great big giant cattle out there that we don't always hear that on. Uh, your packers have stopped the bleeding on the on your uh, cutout values, which I assumed would happen pretty soon. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about your board on Tuesday. December live cattle futures down 50 cents at 108.60. February down 22 cents at 112.87. Going out from there, and they were down a quarter to an up a quarter, and, and not much trade going on and uh, not much open interest there. January feeder cattle up seven cents at 140.10 and tell you what they're keeping those feeder cattle futures up there at a big premium to what our index levels are right now and I think they're expecting uh, these feeder cattle to be quite a bit higher in our first sales right after the first of the year too. March uh, up 30 cents at 140.90 going out from there and they were down a nickel to up 37 cents uh, notable on your beans they were up over 14 cents a bushel on Tuesday and are now very very close to $12 a bushel they've traded higher than that they haven't closed higher than that but uh, getting pretty lofty up there on, on your soybeans uh, your fat cattle trade as I mentioned not a whole lot of trade 
uh, but uh, you know it already appears that it's going to be lower again and like I, I pleaded to you guys earlier in the week just shut the gates and don't trade with them anymore this year uh, unless you just absolutely have some giant cattle you got to get rid of and I think that's uh, mostly what we've started the trickle in is uh, Iowa had 700 head at 103 I did hear from somebody that knew about the cattle and said they were monsters uh, some 165 dressed that would be three bucks lower on the 165 dress. Nebraska about 1500 head at 105. That would be mostly two dollars to three dollars uh, live because uh, you couldn't get 108 much in, in the latter part of last week up in the northern plains. You still could on some in the southern plains, but it's a lower market. And if if you want to take lower money, I guess, and you need to get rid of them bad, it's there. But otherwise. Uh, why not wait until you see what the new year brings after you get past the slowdowns in production through the holidays and they're really going to want to crank these speeds up, uh, change speeds as we get past uh, the new year's holiday. And so I think you'd be a lot better armed to wait and trade then. Box beef cutout values, they've kind of shored them up from the major losses they've seen the last couple of weeks. Choice cuts on Tuesday afternoon, 208.82, down 87 cents. Select down a dime at 192.20. Uh, your slaughter is uh, running at a pretty good clip here, uh, uh, preceding the holidays here in the last week before the holidays. But 240,000 through Tuesday, that's uh, that compares to 234,000 last week and 243,000 a year ago. So uh, right in there, pretty good. Uh, did see note uh, news uh, early in the week that uh, Missouri Prime Beef Packing uh, is a new packing plant that's coming online. Uh, in Missouri, kind of in southwest Missouri, between uh, Bolivar and Springfield right in there. And they're planning on slaughtering quite a few cattle, maybe 500 head a day, and getting uh, started here right after the first of the year. I think that this is, is part of our answer here to get more of those online. And a lot of that comes from money that's been appropriated by the states to help grant some of these uh, facilities to open up, but that will help. This is going to be a, a customized plant, uh, you know, they can handle some of you guys that are wanting to market your own beef there, but don't have a way to process those. Uh, they've, they've got the ability to maintain the identity of those cuts. Uh, through the carcasses and from the uh, the live animal all the way through the process so you can have country of origin labeling on those uh, if you want them there's no law against country of origin labeling it's just voluntary and none of your big outfits want to do it uh, because it would discount uh, the the market the price that they get on their uh, product that's uh, blended with imported products so they don't want to do that but need more of these plants coming in and that's one of the bigger ones I've heard of if indeed they do end up processing that many but uh, Missouri, Prime, uh, Missouri Prime Beef Packers let's, let's hope that they have success there but uh, let's talk about your feeder cattle market your real-time index on DV auction late on Tuesday 136.49 pretty much steady or down just three cents from Monday's close so with several sales uh, working there so just kind of maintaining the market some of your big sales on Tuesday, Ozarks Regional Stockyard, West Plains, Missouri, 3,200 head there. Uh, your calf, or your stalker and backgrounding lighter calves weighing under 700 pounds, steady to $6 higher. Uh, your heavier cattle um, and yearling feeders were not well tested, but kind of had a lower undertone on there. Now, think about this, Ozarks Regional Stockyard, this Saturday, the 19th, they've got 1500 head of, of replacement stock uh, you know bread cows and, and the like in there and I tell you what they've got some good ones they've got several dispersals there uh, most of them all black hided and some pretty nice deals there if you want to get into business I hate to see it but I tell you what in the last year or two we have seen a lot of dispersals in Missouri which is one of our very biggest cow states and I hate to see those outfits getting out I just hope there's some young new blood uh, getting in if they can get financed but this is an opportunity to get some dispersal type uh, quality there and, and just a typical cow sale if you don't have a lot of dispersals you're getting some cows that are at the auction for a reason but when you see dispersal in there guys that are
they're selling completely out. They'll have nice bunches of, of light quality and, uh, and, and close on, the, on the, when they're going to calve up and close on the age and it's a good opportunity to get them. Uh, then on Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 22nd, will be the last sale for the year at, uh, at West Plains. And they're going to sell all classes of cattle, similar to the way Joplin is on the 21st, their last sale. So those will be some of the last sales, but they're going to sell all classes, including cows, bulls, feeders, and calves, and everything. And, and it might be an opportunity for some of you guys that have out cows that want to take advantage of, uh, of the, the shutdown to get in on those last sales. Uh, some of your cow packers could be uh, fairly aggressive on those uh, to kind of keep things moving through the, the week and a half, two week shutdown there and your, your cow plants have a hard time uh, keeping that full. Now likely they've got a lot of cows on feed that they can dip into but still uh, that, that does uh, mean, doesn't mean that they're not going to raise the price on their auction cows because they'll want to get some in there. But uh, another big sale on Tuesday, and oh, and don't forget, always forget there, I don't always, but I sure don't want to, all those sales at Ozarks Regional Stockyard, you can view and bid those sales on dvauction.com. Uh, the cow sale, uh, your replacement sale, your, your feeder sales, all of them, you can view and bid right there at dvauction.com, don't forget that. How about uh, Tuesday, Denny Rezac Livestock Commission, St. Mary's, Kansas. Had about 2,500 head of feeders. Really a nice sale there. A lot of loads like he always gets in there uh, at St. Mary's. But uh, feeder steers on your automated market report sure looked one to two dollars higher to me. Uh, it's not a federally uh, federal state uh, reported market there, but we're reporting it right here. And you hear about it just about every Wednesday morning uh, here on the Feeder Flash. But uh, look at this automated market report out of Rezac Livestock Commission and some of your best tested weights and not filled up with calf or with light calves had mostly bigger uh, backgrounded uh, big bigger feeding calves and yearlings there but uh, look at your best tested weights 442 head of the seven weight steers averaged 769 at 134.95 that'd be over a dollar higher 482 head of the eight weight steers uh, at St. Mary's averaged 866 at 136 75 that was up uh, about a dollar and a third there uh, and then on your nine weight steers 368 head of those uh, average of 938 on the average with a weighted average price of 130.99 or 131 and that was actually down a couple of bucks but uh, I remember uh, last week on your nine weight steers out of Rezac they they uh, they had an average weight of just over 900 pounds so but a good sale there at Rezac Livestock Commission including the stick out sale I saw from there 54 head 888 pound steers at 143. Uh, talk about Philip the Giant. Uh, they had a good sale on Tuesday. I pulled this report. I think they were likely still selling, but when I pulled this report, they'd sold a little over 3,200 head there, uh, but having a good, good sale there. And, and I, I pulled out uh, this automated report from Philip. I'll talk about some of the top quotes there. And they did have mostly lighter calves there, but uh, uh, kind of a good representation of the Northern Plains there this time of year. 322 head of four weight steers, average 453, with a weighted average price of 195.71, helped a lot by a one big string there. 123 head, 459 pound steers off one deal, 203.50. And uh, there's been a lot of over $2, but it's mostly in your three weights and your light fours uh, to be averaging over four and a half at 203.50. That's a pretty strong quote there. How about 515 head of the five weight steers averaging 553 at 173.14? And then almost 750 head of six weight steers out of Phillips, South Dakota, averaged 655 at 155.73, and that's on all of them, guys, not just hand-picked deals. A couple more uh, top quotes there. Miles City, Montana, Miles City Livestock Commission, man, they had a good sale, and it's uh, high quotes on some calves, including this one, 78 head, 546 pound steers, so weighing just almost five and a half at 176. But the top quote that I saw on Tuesday in your Zach Tran top quote for the day, 
come out of Lolly Brothers Livestock Market, Macon, Missouri, longtime DV auction customer there, including their exotic sales, their horse sales. But they had 70 head, 748 pound steer calves in, in Macon, Missouri, bring 147.75. And that's your feeder flash for Wednesday.